how to diagnose keratoconus. So in this video, actually the first of a few in the series from the next few months, we're going to be showing you some signs on how to diagnose keratoconus at the slit lamp. So let's have a look at the examination. So one of the first things that you might be able to tell is that the cornea looks slightly thin. Usually this is inferior or paracentral. Now you might be able to see some subtle scarring in the cornea and there you can see some iron deposition, the Fleischer ring. Let's draw that on there for you. So that's a partial or complete iron deposition ring at the base of the cone and you can see actually see that better with a blue filter. So let's carry on and see whether we can see any other signs. One of the other things that I'd really want to show you is some Vogue striae. So let's see if we can see that there. there. Can you just see those striations? So those striations are very fine vertical stress lines in the deep stroma and decimase membrane. And actually, if you press on the eye, they do disappear. And the other thing that we can see in this examination is some corneal scarring. So what I haven't shown in this video so far, and I don't think I do actually show here, is that you can actually get some areas of epithelial disruption or micro erosions due to some surface irregularity and you can see epitheliopathy so if you do put some fluorescein staining in you can see some changes with this as well so as always i'd always recommend to look at the topography take a history ask about eye rubbing invert the lids and look for subtarsal papillary changes, which might be a sign of allergic eye disease or eye rubbing, which is known to be associated with keratoconus. And always remember to check the other eye. Even if you can only see signs of keratoconus in one eye, it doesn't mean that there are more subtle findings, which may only be able to be visible with topography in the other eye. Hope you find this video useful.